All right, let there be light. Yep. Let's see what we're gonna talk about today. Should I use a power conditioner? Mm. In two channel, that's a much more popular topic. A lot less Should common I, in headphone I, stuff. Should I, would I use a power conditioner? It's very rare to see people using power conditioners in headphone stuff, actually. Only the super duper high end stuff. Yeah. People are like, well, I just got it all and I'll throw it in. If right? it was a two channel guy, you'd see him using it. Yeah. Oh, for sure. He probably yeah, got yeah. a few packed yeah. in the corners that, like yeah. that he's grown out of. Right. So, yeah, but so you're there's, right. The headphone guys. There's really a couple sides on this fence. This is actually a tricky question, like all of them, right? That's why we're answering it. So, the trouble is, you don't really know the condition of the power coming out of your wall. And so a lot of people say, well, just to be sure, I'll get a power conditioner, slam it in, and maybe it'll make things better. Kind of like right? insurance. It, it, yeah, kind of an insurance policy. You can't make it worse, you think. But there's a lot of challenges with that because <laughs> it totally depends on the design of the power conditioner. Some power conditioners are basically a filter. Other ones are regenerators. And typically you're aware of which one it is, but there's a little bit of balance in between those two. And the challenges with the regenerator in a lot of situations, it can improve the sound or the power coming out if you have really bad power coming in. <laughs> it's got to be a really good regen. It's got to be a pure. It's got to be really good. You're talking big bucks, thousands. It's of very dollars challenging. To make one that's Incredibly clean. challenging to do. Yeah. yeah, I think it's much more difficult than it's people not, understand. It's not your APC, you know, fifty or hundred dollar unit that you put, no, no. that you can hook your computer up to and call yeah. it a day. If you could just just like a double conversion or an online yeah. UPS, that's what you really need. Yeah. That's we run those mm, here. We run that yeah. in all our computer systems in here. Everything. Yeah. Uses double conversion, pure right. sign, but they're how much? I mean, we don't. We, we try they're to, expensive. Yeah, they're thousands, but right? Driving your audio system with a design like that is is a poor choice. Yeah. They're really designed more towards switch mode power supplies. And I should where mention you're not we're concerned. not doing it for sound quality no, or anything. We're right. doing it for protection. protection. Yeah, we want our systems to stay up. We have our right. lasers in the back running off of a. Is that a three K dub two and a half three K W? Yeah, three K V A. But yeah, full, yeah, that's just to maintain dual voltage and frequency. Yeah, it's always on. It's always online. So yeah. So that way, a spike or something comes in the building or whatever happens, over voltage, under voltage, the equipment doesn't even see right. it. Right. We should probably yeah. summarize these things though. Yeah. So your power coming in typically sixty cycle in North America, fifty cycle in some parts of the other world. So there's AC sine wave moving up and down. Mm -hmm. The trick with that is it crosses over zero. And so regenerating that, you need to generate a positive and relatively a negative voltage, and it crosses over zero. And so that's the biggest challenge, not only making it smooth Doing it fluid, efficiently. But that zero crossover, a lot of times you get a lot of noise. Yeah. Because you can't turn the positive and the negative rail on and off at the same time. Well, not only that, creating a sine wave is more of a curve where yeah. they're trying to do a step response or a square wave with the electronics. They want to go on or off. Right. That's the most And then efficient. you filter it. The electronics turn power on and off, on, off, on, off. Not right. somewhere in between, which all loses power. So yeah, they're creating a sine wave out of what they really what the electronics are trying to do is a square wave. So you're smoothing a step wave. It's making multiple steps to create right. a, a almost a curved path. But you could do that now, very efficiently, which is why that stuff's more expensive. Sure, it's oh, com more complicated, much more complicated. Yeah, yeah, you could do that very effectively. The zero crossing is always a challenge, and the best way to get the zero crossing right is do it mechanically, which is what the power grid does. Mm -hmm. Right, they have a physical moving like a. A general they have mass. a motor spinning through magnetic field. And so the zero crossing is perfect. Um, now, the challenge is all the stuff on the line of the grid, every your neighbor's electronics, everything in your house, everything that Switching exists on a power, power grid, supplies, like computers, all this stuff typically draws it the most power at the peak because that's where the most power is. Air conditioning units. <laughs> yeah. And so it kind of, the peak gets clipped, they're distorted. Yeah, it, distorts the, it distorts the original signal coming from the, from right. the uh, generation station. So to speak. So it depends on your area, your location, what's running in your house, what's running in your neighbor's what are, what house, the power plant. Of, uh, nuclear power, uh, nuclear. There's not a lot steam. of nuclear. Yeah, steam turbines. Oh, so it's the so same it's still, thing. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right. It's spinning through my yeah, they're not exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. It's also it's all generating. It's all right. spinning a motor. So people like generator. actually bashing the power company and saying, "Oh, they generate bad power." No, they actually generate wonderful power, far better than you can make yourself for the most part. Yeah. Very, very stable. The problem is all the crap. It gets on messed the line. up along the yeah, way. There's all that's taken duct in CMP. It goes for just about anything. Yeah. I, you know, uh, beef, rice. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> okay, I picked on food. I guess I'm getting hungry. Yeah. Uh, things like that. But yeah, just about just about anything that uh, as soon as it leaves the source. Fish, yeah, you pull yeah. the fish out of the water, yeah, right? Sure. It it's not going to get better. right away. Yeah, yeah. Right. so so yeah. it depends on where you are physically relative to the power plant. The what's, the same deal. what's on the grid sure. next to you, because it all impacts you. So that's the challenge. And so, does it make a difference? Can it, it improve sound? 
Yeah, it, it's that Oof. that part of it is, is a variable because what what you're dealing with is, um, in my experience, is that the gear, the the gears could first of all, you we'd have to break this down into what components in a system. Amplifiers have different demands than preamplifiers or DACs, right? In one sense, a preamp, for the most part, a preamp or a DAC or any line level piece is drawing power at a very constant rate, right? It's, 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 it, it doesn't vary with the volume of the music for the most part. Right. It's, it's just nominal. Mm -hmm. So there's not a lot of in need for an impulse or the need for a, a surge in power relative to the music. Where an amplifier is complete opposite. Mm -hmm. Okay, some could argue that it's converting AC to DC and then it's putting DC into rails. And so it, even though you're playing music through it, it shouldn't change, but sure it does. It's, it's translating the audible demand, the demand to drive a load under high power conditions is getting translated through its power supply to the line, to the power cord, through the power cord to the wall outlet or whatever the source of power is. And so yes, it does vary its power draw at an audible rate. It may not be an exact exact duplicate of what you're listening to, but odd, the rate, the audio that's being played through the system is certainly modulating the current demands of the amplifier. So that's a whole different ball game than the preamp amp. So all that being said, um, here's where line conditioners come in is because think about whether you talk about a power cord on the amp or the device or the line conditioner, basically there's a chain, there's a chain between the back of the device the IC jack, whatever, to the wall outlet. So anything you place in line with that has the ability to change the way those units draw, get cur get current quickly, mm -hmm. especially particularly an amplifier. You're adding an unknown. You're adding a variable where there was just a power cord, just a simple cable or whatever to the wall, right? So that variable can change the sound in a number of ways. It could go to the plus side in some respects. It could go to the minus side in others, and so. What I've learned over time is that it's a balancing act. It's like, you know, how does it how, does the conditioner help more than it harms? And that is only can be said by trial and error for the most part. You there are some devices, some conditioners out there that are very good. They're very expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the guys that make the five, six thousand dollar, ten thousand dollar units, they they're using all premium components, right? Two, three hundred dollar a piece outlets, you know, yeah. <laughs> solid, solid core wiring, you know, point mm -hmm. to point wiring. They're paying attention. They got copper buses in some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. They're paying attention to a crap load of detail, um, you know, just for you to be able to plug something in, uh, you know. So, I mean, in that respect, it's, you know, it's probably pretty good, you know. But the question is, at, and, and at that point, it might be better than nothing, or it might not. It might not change enough for you to matter. Um, so, you know, that boils down to what you were talking about with the quality of the power coming in, boils down to the components you're using, how good are they, how good are their power supplies at mm -hmm. rejecting noise coming in the line. Right. You know, maybe, you know, you got something, you could have a massive amp with a toroidal transformer, 2KW, 2KVA transformer, right? It's its own line conditioner. What are you going to stick in front of that to help it? It's already a 2KVA transformer, right? Well, you know, the only thing you do is slow that thing down, in my opinion, right? You're not gonna, you're not gonna help it by shoving another transformer in front of it or whatever is in the line conditioner, you know? So you start to limit, you can be, things can become limiting factors to devices like that where it's like, okay, do I really need to do this? So most, most amp manufacturers, you know. Well, it depends on the company. <laughs> yeah, but most of them will say, All right, go right to the wall. Yeah. yeah, generally with an amp. You know, they've learned. Plugging right into the walls probably better because you would avoid the impedance issue yeah because a lot of times the output impedance of these regenerators unless it's a really big one a really high power one or a very well designed one a lot of times it's worse than the wall and so maybe it benefits in some areas but it's worse in others and so just like everything it's challenging to say it may improve it it may not yeah <laughs> on really low power stuff that draws power at a constant rate this doesn't matter at all and so it's very possible that a regenerator or a line conditioner can improve the sound of some of these devices, especially possible. if you have garbage power coming in. It's possible. It's possible. But then, you know, the line level devices tend to have higher gain and they tend to be more sensitive to noise on the line. So if your line regenerator or whatever is adding noise, yeah. it could actually be multi multiplied to the Which that's also the preamp or mm -hmm. you know, especially like on phono stages and stuff when mm -hmm. you're talking Six yeah. potential for 40 to 80 dB again. It's just ridiculous amount of gain to take the sound off a cartridge of a yeah. record and yeah. amplify it through to the speakers. You know, so 
yeah, there's things like that where you kind of learn by trial and error. You know, you got you like you just kind of got to try it, and uh, or at least go by the experience of others who have tried it and says, yeah, this thing's good on a, on a phono stage, or this thing just completely sucks on it in terms of conditioning. So it's yep. tricky. Cables play a part in this too. We have to cover that because these again are in series with everything that goes to the wall outlet. They're part of the chain. So if you add a line conditioner, you need to pay some attention to the power cord on it if it gives you the ability to do that. You know where it has an IEC. You've got to pay some attention to that, and you know it doesn't necessarily have to be the the rule of thumb that I've learned and I've taught people over the years is that the further you get the, the everything starts at the back of the component and moves away from that. So the IEC jack, the power cord, whatever the source of power is, if there's a conditioner, then the power cord and that, then the wall. As you get f incrementally further away from the gear in the AC realm, things become a bit less critical. Hmm. Still audible but less critical. So it starts with the back of the gear, which means invariably you're starting with the power cord on that. And it makes a difference, especially on like amps and stuff like that. It's The amps are probably the biggest thing to make change, or even a, even a headphone amp, even though it's a lower power amp. And then, so you plug that into the closest source of power. For some people it's an outlet strip, right? Some people it's a line <laughs> conditioner. Some people it's a wall outlet. Yeah. So if you have all three, great, try it. See what sounds better. But. Um, but yeah, in, in the end, uh, this is a, the wall. The power coming to the unit is 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 a bit of an interface for that particular unit, and um, you need to optimize the that interface. You need to optimize it for that particular unit. Yeah. And yeah, with amplifiers, you really don't want to throw inductors or transformers in front of it. You don't. Probably not. You probably don't want to throw an extra power cord on your amplifier because it's already got one. Now right. you're going to throw another one on that the line conditioner has, and all the internal wiring in the conditioner. You don't know what that's made up of without popping the cover. You know. If I would say, as a general guide, the way to go for most people is start with a dedicated run. If you're going to invest in a power conditioner, yeah. I think a dedicated run to the main panel is probably a sensible guide, especially if you don't know what's going on on the wall. Because a lot of times an outlet might be daisy chained through five, six, seven, eight other things. Yeah. And if your refrigerator's on the same line or dish, well, yeah. like you don't really know all different homes. kinds of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pick up homes because you don't know. A lot of times in older homes, people are totally unaware, but one outlet might be on the same circuit as 20 other outlets. Yeah, it goes yeah. up in the attic, it goes down, yeah. hits three right? bedrooms, the, yeah. the bathroom. Yeah, you just don't know. So the noise coming off yeah. the switch mode power supply in your new LED light. Your yeah. internet of, of or, whatever. Or that there are those twisty wires that are twisted together in a box six rooms uh, on the other side of the house. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, that are <laughs> a little bit arcing going on in there because sure. they're 50 years old. And There's a whole bunch yeah. of things that can be so going running on. running a straight run, for yeah. sure, from the breaker panel. And having a good quality outlet, too. And a good, good outlet. contact. Yeah, because, yeah. right. Yeah, because the contacts in a good outlet are thicker. Yeah. They clamp better. They hold over the long term better. Yeah. You know, they, they lower the resistance. So, yeah, I mean, these things are, you don't have to spend, you don't necessarily right. have to spend a million dollars on no. this stuff. You can, <laughs> well, if you yeah. wanted to, you know. We and sell in turn, we sell in wall wiring, our power AC in wall. We created a category that never existed. In fact, I still don't think there's more than two, three companies making it. But it's a UL rated cable that's made to go in the wall. It's a 10 gauge, very finely stranded. It's a high end power cord to go from the breaker panel to the outlet. Yeah. And, um, you know, we w the reason that came about was because we had all these, we started making 20 some years ago, or so we made started making all these fancy power cords and began to realize we're plugging in the commercial Romex wiring, you know, not to pick on the word Romex, but that's what everyone knows. Well, yeah. The commercial, you know, flat parallel runs of copper wire that's made of 10% bone meal. You know what's in the copper. It's not, <laughs> it's not like, you know, someone said, oh, we're gonna mine this out of a special mine in Africa and sell it to Home Depot. You know, in fact, some of the shit's coming out of aluminum now, I guess, yeah. or something like that. And you don't even know. I don't think the Romex is, but maybe. I don't remember. You know? Are no. they doing that? They're not doing no. it with that. No, it's not more that. The, it's more the individual the larger, conductor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the larger the stuff. The THNN get. stuff. Uh, so you don't even know what it is. No, THN is copper. THN. It always is copper? Yes. Oh. <laughs> so it's the it's the feeder the feeder line. Yeah, yeah. you could get that in aluminum yeah. very commonly. Or, or they got it at home. The vast depot. majority of wire in the electric grid is aluminum and the stuff so running to your house is probably running, aluminum. What, what was it? It wasn't AC cable? They were running aluminum and was it COM cable? Oh, it was the freaking CAT cables they were running. Oh, that's oh, COM. Yeah. 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 That's super, super common idea. now. Yeah. It's copper clad aluminum yeah. is what they're calling yeah. it, which basically means aluminum, but they put copper but on the, the outside. the cladding varies. 
well, yeah. and thickness. It's really, so, oh, yeah, it's so really you're crude. probably looking at some janky shit in there. Yeah. yeah. So, the, <laughs> the and trick that, and with then that is. Then you're dealing with dissimilar metals because you're yeah. putting it on a connector that probably ain't made for that. It's yeah. digging in through the copper They're doing shell. that to save money. Yeah, right. And so it's not. But it's not done range. in power yet. Okay. No, uh, it's done reason, in it coax uh, and either that. Well, the reason, <laughs> and that's the reason, commonly. again, from the commercial side, you never know what you stumble on or get to because it's made to be cheap. It's not made for audio. It's not made to sound good. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, where we design this with, you know, high temp insulations and, you know, rope lay, you know, copper alloys that we're using just for audio. And so it's expensive as hell for as a cable goes. You know, it's 30 bucks a foot. It is not cheap wire cable, but it's a, it's a, yeah. it's a cable you can run to a amp or a system, the entire run off the entire system. And just one run is all you really need from breaker mains to the room. And from there, you can go into a really high-end outlet strip or a strip or just have a number I was on a wall. To me, I mean, in, tr in trying all this stuff over all these years, listening to these different conditioners and topologies people have come with over time, there's, n there's nothing better than a direct source of power, a main of individual run from the mains panel, a home run to your room, and plug everything into it. You know, it's and, a good start. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. as good as it gets. And if you still have a problem, then, well, okay, then you, maybe you should have a professional, somebody look at the quality of power. You need actually need an oscilloscope. Yeah. Yeah, you know, right? a, a ground yeah. isolated oscilloscope <laughs> to look at the go into the go look at the one ten line and see what's riding on the line, and then someone can make a professional decision as to what will get rid of it. Because really, even in the high-end realm, well, these line conditioners, they're not Band-Aid. They're not perfect things. Nothing is. No. But, <laughs> I mean, people think that. Like, people think, you know, it's kind of like the word shield. That's true. Yeah. When yeah. people hear the word shield, they think, oh, it's shielded, so we're good to go. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, come on. Yeah, no. A shield is, most shields are jokes. It's very challenging to add something that improves the sound. Very, yeah. yeah. Without, you already have a chain of functional without it components. causing another problem. Right, and you yeah. put something in between it that improves the sound. It's very unusual. It's very uncommon. you got to have a yeah. problem coming in, typically. There's a lot to talk about with conditioners. I'm I trying to think if I missed anything, because I, I cover this with people we on the phone the all the time. We for the most part. Well, we're it's using this one. dedicated line to run that light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's perfect. <laughs> that's some nice light well, coming out of it. The problem is it always depends on the thing. the Diana pop, the white light. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so to sum this up, basically, we, line conditioners can be can be beneficial, but really only in a sense that there's a known issue that needs to be resolved. And uh, and I, I know, so the guys that make line conditioners are going to hate me for saying that. And a lot of guys that have line conditioners on two channel systems, and they like the sound of it, it improves the sound. But of course, and they don't know what the underlying issue is that it's helping. It's just, but it, but it's helping, and that's yeah. great. That's a positive. And, and, you know, I would say it's a 50-50. I would say that's about the odds of something like that being effective. So, you know, if, if you can afford it and you're willing to try it and, and you flip of a coin in terms of it's going to be better, then do it. And that's really, that's really you know, I, my our best take on it. Yeah. Um, you know, it really is. But personally, I would say it's a very good idea, at the very least, if it's practical and easy enough, Run a dedicated line before you put a line conditioner in. Yeah, that's probably going to have. Even if it is Romex, even if right. it is like yeah. mm -hmm. and then it's fine. A twelve gauge, twelve gauge uh, Romex, yeah, no sure. problem. To a dedicated yeah. outlet, you can do ten yeah. if you want to get a little that, fancy. Agree. That alone is illuminates all the variables in the yep. home wiring. You know, and agreed. in a traditional stick frame house in North America, it's a few hundred dollars to have an electrician come in and do that for the most part. Unless it's super long or super challenging for some reason, it's really not that expensive a lot of times. So I think that's a pretty good start. That's one of my first questions when somebody calls me and asks me that kind of question, like, do I need a light conditioner or does it help up? I say, well, how old is your house? Yeah. You know? and it, not to mean that a new house can't have a problem. Well, but yeah, right, of course. <laughs> it's, they're way more following the rules than they used to back in the 50s and 60s. Yeah, code's a lot more stringent now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, someone's actually looking at that yeah. thing, you know? Uh, well, you hope. Yeah, yeah you should. hope. Yeah, yeah, they should, mostly. So anyway, yeah, that's one of my first questions. And when you know, when they get to saying, well, I'm in a 100-year apartment in New York, it's like, oh, jeez. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, maybe. Maybe you are a candidate for a line conditioner because yeah. you can't do anything. Yeah, you can't right, run right. a line. You can't. So, okay, yeah, there, I should, we should caveat that, that there are situations where yeah. if you're in an apartment complex or you're in a place where you can't run a dedicated line, right. this may solve more problems it than, it, than it causes. So there are, there are useful situations absolutely for it you know and again there are a couple high-end companies that are into power cabling and stuff that do make really good line conditioners 
without naming them, they're out there. <laughs> but you're talking, you know, usually you're you're going to go into the multi thousand dollar range to get something that's really well yeah, thought out. For sure. So you know, to me, if you get into that range, you're probably pretty good. It's not that scary. And the odds oh, are yeah. better that it's going to be more positive than negative. You know? Absolutely. So, anyway, go for it if you want it. Why not? It's not, you know, worst case scenario is you, you know, you hook up your lights on it instead of a <laughs> stereo system, you know? Right. Use it on your computer or your TV <laughs> instead. You know, it's worst case scenario. So anyway, we should probably wrap this one up, right? It's been a little lengthy. It's yeah. been, yeah, we're going, we're on and on. With this yeah. One. But uh, it's an important topic. A lot of people have this question in all audio. I've, I've taken on this question literally probably a thousand times over in over the years so it's important so anyway um thanks for watching guys please subscribe to us don't forget we're going to run over a headphone we're almost at a thousand subscriptions so we're coming close to running over our 1266 all right and then we're going to find out if it survives yeah a b we're going to give it away so after we put it back in shape <laughs> okay, take care of you thanks